Hey everyone, I'm Alex. And I'm Jack. And today we'll be ranking the difficulty of the bosses in the newly released Gotham Knights. I'm gonna be straightforward with you guys. This game is a real fucking piece of shit. Jack and I only made it about half an hour in before realizing Gotham has way bigger problems than just the Court of Owls. It's tedious, frustrating, dull, awkward, predictable, and just about any other negative adjective you can attribute to something. It crashes constantly and booted me out of the multiplayer at random more times than I can count. People were shocked at the 30 frames revelation, which I didn't really care about, at least until learning 30 was a tentative maximum and not the standard. This game, even with these low settings, is comparable to Cyberpunk 2077 in terms of functionality. I can think of a multitude of better ways to spend $70, like lottery tickets or fentanyl patches. If you want the skinny on the bosses without subjecting yourself to hours of monotonous torment, we're your guys. We promise that watching this video, along with its companion video ranking the bosses from worst to best, will be much better uses of your time than trying it out yourself. Heads up, there will be spoilers, although frankly it barely matters because the story is such dog shit. With that said, let's get into it. I'm sure it's difficult to be at your fullest potential only a minute or two after coming back from the dead, but you're fooling nobody saying this dingus is the same guy who showed inhuman durability, strength, and power in his fight with Ra's al Ghul. And that was against Ra's al Ghul, nonetheless his own apprentices. Anyways, Bruce is a damage sponge with his only notable attacks being teleportation and AoEs. If he gets no reprieve, he will kill over and be appealed to in just under a minute. At least the other bosses could put up a fight. No bones about it, Talia Al Ghul is easy. And no, unfortunately I don't mean she lets you bang her in a QTE like Aphrodite in God of War 3. That wouldn't matter much here anyways though because she's totally chopped in this game unlike in Arkham City. Indeed, I mean that she is quite simply a joke of a final boss. Don't be fooled by her two health bars, they both go down as if you're doing a stealth takedown in a common goon. We came into this fight at level 30, having been conditioned early on by that wretched Mr. Freeze boss fight into thinking that we'd have to be leagues above any boss we faced to not have the experience ruined by monotony. Unfortunately, Talia is not built to withstand precision crit shots to the skull like some of her ridiculously tanky League of Shadows underlings were. Even while standing still and emoting, she didn't touch me. If you manage to get caught by one of her blows, it might as well be a bite from a gnat so you needn't sweat. This final boss is a test of your ability to stay awake more than it is your combat prowess, an embarrassing but all too familiar comment about Batman games and their respective big bads. Now, in fairness, we entered this fight ridiculously overleveled, although the reason we did so, stay to find out. Mr. Freeze was not the most fairly balanced boss, so I'll put it at that. Even so, Harley's moveset is not very expansive, and the hardest this fight gets comes with enemy padding by way of weak, low-level freaks. Her only weapon is her hammer, a hammer can only do so much, but she's very agile and this plays both into her moveset and her evasion. The majority of your attacks will miss her, and momentum abilities are a great way to break her spells of dodging. Simple, no phase-to-phase -phase moveset expansion and us being overleveled makes Harley one of the easiest bosses we face during our journey through Gotham. <sighs> These two knuckleheads. Instead of a fight with Harley Quinn, or should I say Harles, to use Nightwing's worst sounding nickname, she just sends her best and hopefully not brightest to dish out a beating. Basher is simply a beefed up freaks bulldozer, so he shares their weakness for walking away after a couple hits and coming back with a heavy attack. Methinks they took the phrase combat loop a smidge too literally. Anyways, Blazer is a good deal more noteworthy since he has a weapon that I can't recall being wielded by any of the other obese goons in the game, making him the only one of his kind. Well, discounting the other guy named Blazer who fights you in the second phase unless you mean to tell me he suffered that ass beating only to recover in under a minute and head on down. It is strange how boss health bars end at like 15% in this game, I presume it's to show that you're beating them within an inch of their life and not quite into the great beyond, but who's to say. The bomb defusal phase is a lot harder, or at least more drawn out, as is always the case with these gank bosses. There's a timer that occasionally pops up telling you to defuse a bomb, but this only takes about half a second, so the chances of you actually dying to this are slim to none. I suppose these bombs must have been made by Basher and Blazer too, shoddy craftsmanship. All in all, this is a fight that I can imagine being harder by yourself, but playing with someone else it's simply a slightly tanky divide and conquer exercise.
Once again, this was a case of us being simply too strong for the boss to handle, but like Harley, Mecha Freeze was fairly easy to avoid and his moveset was never truly threatening enough to put us in any real danger. He has four mechanical spider limbs that you break down through constant damage. He has a shockingly little amount of health, which is all the more embarrassing for him because of how much of a shithead he is in it. A total prick with no reason on the surface for being evil, he just is. And he got beat up for it, and then upgraded his entire suit, then got beat up even worse. All for nothing. The second phase is barely different from the first, except in the vantage point sections where he fires off AoE missiles and homing rockets. It's a fun break and forces ranged attacks over melee. Either works while he's on the ground, though. Fun and easy, Mecha Freeze was a great time. As the highest recommended level holder of all the case file finales, you'd think Clayface would turn out to be a real motherfucker, but he's honestly about as difficult as Mecha Freeze, with the margins being rather slim. He's not built to combat ranged attacks, so you can range attack spam him with little danger for the first part. The real challenge begins when he forces you to escape him on the bat cycle, or at least for Jack, who was the kind of guy who would ever learn to drift in Mario Kart. The only time this segment pulls anything tricky as far as I was concerned is when he switches up what he blocks with the clay at this one part near the end, although it hits for little damage. It's nothing anyone is actually going to die on unless you have a fatal blood alcohol content backing your driving. The last stretch is broken up by another phase change, which had Jack and I paranoid would kill them before he could really do anything. Nope, that phase is just weak as hell and goes down in a matter of seconds. He makes stuff appear in the floor, that's about it. It does like 10% of your health, so I was able to spam him without hardly moving and come out on top. The same is more or less true of the final phase where he gets warmed into solidity and transitions over to smashing attacks. It's also a cakewalk, but on higher difficulties where dodging actually matters, I could see it maybe being hard because dodging in this game is clunky bullshit and doesn't even work half the time due to how little ground your evade covers and the lack of iframes. That said, I have no idea why anyone would play this game on hard mode and subject themselves to the ridiculous level of bullet sponginess that would impart onto the overworld enemies. Kudos to the enemy values guy for making Harley Quinn the second most insane thing in the game. This won't be the last case of this happening in this ranking, but the initial side mission boss fight beats out the latter in difficulty. I think by the time you reach level 29 to 30, the mods and craftable gear become so unbelievably powerful that the only things that can withstand them are champion tier enemies also at level 30, whereas we were still humans at earlier levels. That isn't to say Clayface is hard, he really isn't, but what he is, is creative. As proven by Arkham City and now Gotham Knights, a fair and fun Clayface boss is very achievable if you just put some creative spin on the encounter. Unlike his other two boss fights, Clayface actually splits into three separate beings at once, aided by clay homunculuses. Believe me, Alex and I love ourselves some homunculi. Clayface's Phase 1 moveset consists mostly of elastic punches, with your overall objective being to knock down all three bodies at once to move the fight on. It was also helpful that his weakness was fire, and Alex had infinite incendiary rounds at his disposal. With simple combos, you can boss around Clayface, his only escape is shifting under the grates and morphing in a new location. Once again, the fight is easy at best, but the creative qualities of it make it fun nonetheless. Nope, not Kirk Langstrom, just one of his test subjects that Tali unleashes upon Gotham for absolutely no reason. This man bat story beat came out of nowhere in the final chapter, and I still have no idea what the point of it was. The entire story was a confusing mess, like how Harley got out of Blackgate to become a fraudulent wellness speaker, and the case of Mr. Freeze supposedly cobbling together his finest work out of cement he chipped off his cell wall with a spoon, but this takes the cake. It's not so bad in the first encounter at Arkham Asylum, but the subsequent encounters are an enormous spike in difficulty from anything else in the game. For one, Man Bat does more damage than any other boss in the game for some reason. He moves fast, and oftentimes the classic culprit of shitty awkward dodge movement is front and center as well. Have fun getting caught in a fatal dive bomb when Jason moves two inches away with every circle press. The annoying League of Shadows goons start dropping in at random intervals to catch you in their 30 second long command grabs, which makes for absolutely enthralling gameplay. Truly, we didn't appreciate how good we had it when Man Bat was just an anticlimactic QTE in Gotham Knight. This fight marks the transition on our list from bosses we had to restrain from attacking viciously to avoid killing them too fast to monsters who prove that the worst combination on the quality difficulty matrix is shitty and difficult.
As Alex said, these two bosses were in an entirely separate league than the rest of the game's few others, with Mr. Freeze being the undisputed heavyweight champion of absurd, miserable, any word you want, just the worst possible boss fight experience. Fair difficulty is a term many use when describing boss fights. What makes a boss fair is a moveset that challenges the player in a creative but understandable way, consistency in AI, arena design, and proper balancing. While Freeze has the rest going for him, he is balanced about as well as a meth head twirled around on a spinny chair, shot up with cocaine, and sent out to sprint down a hundred meters straight away. Needless to say, even with us being overleveled, it took us around 15 minutes to whittle down Freeze to the point of death, and not only was his health absurdly girthy, but his damage output was just incorrectly balanced. Freeze's base moveset is actually quite broad, with homing rockets, AoEs, lasers from his guns, and in between phases he jumps on top of his climate machine and fires off cycles of lasers. I wasn't a huge fan of this move, especially because of the lack of jumping in this game. Well, less I wasn't a fan and more it's a bunch of fucking bullshit. While he gains a few new moves in the later phases of this fight, the overall gist never changes and it is easily the hardest and worst boss in Gotham Knights. Maybe my least favorite boss in the entire Arkham roster ever as well. Thanks so much for watching and we hope you enjoyed. For those of you who are fans of the Batman games as a whole, our channel has plenty of videos on the other games as well as this one. That's all for now. Deuces.